a quick video here showing you how to collect payments using Calendly. Now, this is great for a service-based business where you have to schedule a time. Maybe you have to go out to somebody's house or maybe you are meeting for an appointment or something where basically you're scheduling appointments and they have to pay to book that appointment. Also great for coaching. I actually don't do this for coaching. I set up the agreement with my client and then manually send them an invoice. I just find that better rather than having somebody schedule. We, we schedule it manually and then I send them an invoice rather than doing it this way. But you could in Calendly set it up for your coaching clients that they select a time and make their payment uh, at the time of booking their uh, coaching uh, meeting. So all you have to do here is come up to integrations and I do it with Stripe. So if you come up to integrations and here I'll, I'll open it in this tab. And I'm going to show you how to do it with Stripe. Uh, just look for Stripe here. You just come to Stripe and it's super simple. I'm not going to walk through these steps because you can see mine's already connected here. But if you weren't connected, it would just make you click a couple buttons here, log into Stripe, and it would connect your two accounts and you'd be good to go. You're synced up with Stripe. So once your Stripe account is collect connected, that's how you collect payments. It's, that's how it goes to you. The payment goes from Calendly into Stripe and then Stripe into your bank account. So once that is set up, then you can go over here and set up a new meeting. And so this you can set up for each of your products. So I'm going to set up an event. I'm going to say, I'm going to make it one-on-one. -on -one. You could do group, but I'm going to say, let's just say it's a one-on-one -on -one client, service-based business. You know, you're going to your their house for, I don't know, a haircut or something. Say you're a hairdresser. You go to their house for a haircut. Um, so you are setting it up manually. And let's say I'm just going to call it test because I'm going to delete this later. At a location, we're going to say it's in person. I'm going to say, I don't know. New York City. But that will be, you can edit this and say your house, like upon discussion or my hair salon, here's the address, something like that. Uh, description. Event. This is, so this is what the URL will be. So calendly.com slash Jake Lang slash test. So I'm going to leave that now. You can set the color. That doesn't really mean anything just for you to quickly see. Um, you can, you can color code your events that you have on here. All right, this stuff's kind of important. You can let people book out a certain number of days. So for, for my coaching calendar, I only do 14 days because I don't want people booking out 60 days from now. But say I stick with a hairdresser example, you might want you know, 90 days or uh, 30 days. It depends on your business. So you can say how many calendar day, days you want. You can make it business days only. Date range. This is, uh, this is going to, I'll show you this in the next step, but what your schedule will look like when somebody views your calendar and clicks on a date. How long will the event be? Let's say for a haircut, 60 minutes. I'm going to set custom hours. And so it just automatically populates nine to five, but you can come in here and, and click each one. You can edit all Tuesdays. So let's say I don't want to work at all on Tuesday. So I'm going to say all Tuesdays I'm unavailable. You can see all Tuesdays are gone. Let's say on Wednesdays, I'm only available. Sorry, I want to edit all Wednesdays. Wednesdays, I'm only available from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And there we go. You can see this is now setting my calendar for all Wednesdays. And let's say, you know, the 27th, maybe I know that uh, I'm not available that day. So I just want to edit that one date. I'm going to delete that. And you can see that one day I'm unavailable, but every other Thursday I'm available. So that's good enough for now. You guys can, can play with that and you can set your schedule out as far as you want. You can set uh, a recurrent schedule or you can edit specific days when you know you are busy that day and can't have any appointments. Buffer time, this is good for when you're booking back-to-back -back meetings. You can say how many meetings you can have in a day, but let's just say you're a hairdresser. You know you're going to have commute time. You're going to need a little break in between. So between each event, you want an hour so that nobody can book back-to-back. -back. And we'll click Next. Then questions that you ask. So I oftentimes do, I want first and last name of the person. So this is when they fill out the form. They click the date. They click the time. Okay, what information do you need from them? Um, let's see if there's anything else you can do here. Yep, that's good. Okay, yeah, I want name, email, uh, anything else to prepare, new questions. So you, you can see you can add stuff here, like maybe their address, their phone number, uh, multiple choice. I, I don't know if we're doing, let's take on the hairdresser example, coloring, cut, what type of cut they want, and things like that. You can add uh, check buttons here and, and make them answer this question as they fill out the form. Uh, 
you can set this up. I'm not going to do it here, but you can say it, you can see that it will send text notifications, email reminders, um, you know, syncing with your email systems. But uh, workflows are great for just automated notifications and things like that. And here's the notifications as well. Um, depending on the meeting, for example, if you're a coach, I I do a lot of Zoom meetings, and this will automatically send a calendar invite an email reminder to my coaching client. Hey, here's your zoom link. Yeah, I can set text reminders, email reminders, email follow-ups and Hey, our meeting's coming up in an hour. The meeting's coming up in half an hour. Here's a zoom link. Get ready for it. Confirmation page. So this is great for sending them to just a thank you page or, okay, here's the next steps. So I'll say you're a coach. You can send them to great. You signed up for our co coaching, um, our coaching program. Here's the next step. Fill out this survey and tell me a little bit more about yourself. So I know what to expect and what you want to talk about on this call. So that's what the confirmation page is for, just to redirect after they sign up. Now, the purpose of this video is show you how to collect payments through Stripe. Well, that's here uh, right at the very bottom. You can collect payments. Let's say I collect with Stripe. I'm going to charge hundred dollars for my haircut because I'm a really good hairdresser. Uh, payment terms can really be whatever you want. You can click the little question mark. If I can click it, there we go. Yeah. Uh, information like reschedule and cancellation. So I could say, you know, uh, no refund if you cancel within 48 hours of the appointment, uh, payment terms, uh, no, you know, no refunds, or maybe if I offer a money back guarantee or something like that. And so I can save and close. And now my form is set up. Now, if I click this view live page, it'll show my link. So here's Jake Lang slash test. It's showing January. Now you can see, remember I, I blocked off that I'm not available on Tuesdays. I said Thursday, the 27th, I'm not available. So say a client wants to come in here. You can either send them this link or often what I do is I will embed this on my website. You can do that through Calendly. You can get a code. Uh, I use WordPress. So I, I use a plugin to just put it right on my website on a nice sales page where people can, can come here to book their appointments uh, or you can create some type of redirect link or make this a, a nicer link that's jake lang slash haircut or something like that uh, so you, you can play with the link there to make it look more professional but let's just say i send somebody this link they're a new client this is the page that they see this would be the name here's my photo here's my name this is the name of the product so it wouldn't be test here's the location the uh, the length of time that the appointment will be and the price so let's go ahead and book something here let's say okay i want wednesday Remember I said the appointments are half an hour each. And so you can see all my times available here for booking a haircut. So let's book at 1 PM confirm. I have to type in all my stuff here. And then you can see, I'm not going to do this here cause I don't want to charge myself a hundred dollars, but I can pay right here and schedule the event. And then you will get a notification both the buyer and the owner of the business, the seller would get a notification. Hey, new appointment. It would schedule it on your calendar. You can add it to your Google calendar. You get the payment goes right into your Stripe account and you have successfully, successfully booked an appointment through Calendly synced with Stripe. So that's how you do it. That's how you set up Calendly to accept payments using Stripe.